Hi everyone, welcome to Sunny Bitcoin. In this episode, I had a fantastic conversation with Jeremy, who heads Gemini's Asia office in Singapore. Gemini is again one of the top exchanges I recommend, especially to new users to buy Bitcoin, and it's one of my most trusted companies. In today's episode, we discussed the Winklevoss brothers' involvement in crypto and their vision for Gemini. We discussed all of Gemini's products, both for retail users as well as family offices and institutions. We spoke about industry-leading products that Gemini offers besides their exchange like Gemini Earn, Gemini Custody, and their stablecoin GUSD, and what makes them so popular. We also discussed NFTs and a special Sadi Bitcoin announcement on NFTs. I really enjoyed this conversation, and I hope you do too. <laughs> So Jeremy and I have met once uh, before at my place. Uh, I think you had just recently joined Gemini Singapore. Uh, that was a fun uh, afternoon. <laughs> Great weather, Jeremy. Thanks for doing this and thanks for coming on Sunny Bitcoin. No, thank you for having me. I think that that, that was the first time that I actually was uh, you know in, invited to a, a Sentosa Cove place. It's like beautiful view. Thank you, for, and also that lemonade was really good. You gotta do that again. <laughs> yeah, we have to. We have to skip these virtual and do a. We could have actually done a live podcast recording, but I don't have the setup, so maybe next time I just find this easier. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Jeremy, t- tell us a little bit about your background, how you entered uh, crypto, and what do you do at Gemini? Yeah, I think it's really interesting. Um, so, unlike most people in this space, they're either you know in tech or have an engineering degree or fintech for that matter. Uh, but for me, actually, you know, I you know I graduated with uh, finance from NUS in Singapore. And I joined a investment bank. Uh, I was at Goldman Sachs, you know, uh, right after school. So actually, I spent twenty years in investment banking, um, up until last year, when, when you know, I I, I was actually um, being approached by a couple of uh, crypto exchanges, and and that actually really you know comes on the back that MAS have passed a legislation in January last year that all crypto businesses, whether it's exchange or custodian, they need to be regulated and licensed under the MAS Payment and Services Act. Now, cryptocurrency is classified as a digital payment token, uh, not a security. And that's why it doesn't go under Securities Futures Act, but under the Payment Services Act. So because of that, a lot of crypto exchanges decided that they need to set up an office here in Singapore in order to continue the operation. And that's why you know, I, I was um, being introduced a lot of these roles. And among all the different exchanges, and you know, I, I hit up with the Winklevoss brothers, um, our founders. You might have heard of him from the Facebook uh, or that movie, Social Network, you know, for that matter. And, and we kind of hit it off, and uh, I really bought into their vision uh, of you know using crypto to empower individual and changing you know the, the way finance or basically the whole future of money, right? You know, with with the adoption of crypto. Um, and I decided, okay. 20 years of banking, I think it's time for me to shed my suit and tie and, and, and trade it for hoodie and jeans. And, and, and that's how I kind of got into this space. But, but obviously, you know, before that, you know, I, I'm already quite, um, quite interested and be following. Uh, I personally invested in Bitcoin and Ethereum back in 2018. Obviously, you know, um, you know got burned badly, but I kind of held on to that because I, I just kind of believe in the technology. And I was patient and I'm pretty happy that I held on until now. Um, but essentially, I think, you know, really the whole blockchain technology is, is really kind of changing the way things are working. I, I can kind of go a little bit deeper into that, but, but in a nutshell, 20 years in banking, don't know much about crypto, but the last uh, nine months and after I joined uh, since June uh, has been a, an amazing ride. Uh, you know, it's just so much is happening. I'm still learning everything. I probably learned like 1% of what I need to know. <laughs> And you're quickly becoming a local uh, celebrity. So you're on Channel uh, 8 tonight. Yeah, that's right. First time to be interviewed in Mandarin, uh, in Chinese. I mean, I, I can have like conversational Mandarin, you know, not a problem. But to be able to explain what is cryptocurrency, blockchain and things like that in, in Chinese is, is going to be quite a challenge. So I, I think it's going to be funny tonight. <laughs> So two discussions today, one on Sunny Bitcoin and one on Channel 8. I'm pretty sure that this is the one you're more excited about. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, <laughs> always a fun time with, uh, with Sunny Bitcoin, right? So tell us a little bit about the Winklevoss brothers. Uh, who manages Gemini on a day-to-day basis and uh, what keeps them busy? 
Yeah, actually, um, despite I think what we all read about the Winklevoss brothers, you know, they they are actually the CEO and president of Gemini. So this is the only company that they're actively running and managing. For the rest of the portfolio companies, and it's kind of held under um, their investment arm, uh, is Winklevoss Capital Management. So I speak to them on a very regular basis, you know, weekly, uh, um, bi-weekly at a minimum. And in terms of the strategic direction, you know, where they're going to invest or put in resources, uh, they actually have a um, very active involvement. But obviously, there's also a management team that I'm part of that will decide on the strategy and whatnot. By the end of the day, I think, you know, they, they want to be able to kind of like also have input because they, they give a very long-term vision uh, on where the company is heading. Uh, one example is, you know, how they decided that you know, the company will have a very long-term vision. And and for they're happy to forego you know certain near term you know earnings or revenue and one good example is SRP Ripple which obviously is one of the top traded uh, token uh, but it is a token that has never got listed on the Gemini exchange and we've all kind of read about certain you know allegation and whatnot uh, some exchanges and they have to kind of pull off the listing at some point. So for us, until because now, because its potential characterization as a security, that risk was always there. Yeah, correct. And I did not know that Gemini took this conservative approach and never listed XRP. That's great. Yeah. So obviously, there's a lot of uh, trading volume that that's missing from exchange because of that. But but that kind of just shows you, you know, the way the Winklevoss brothers and run the company. They're looking at it from a very long term perspective, <laughs> and not just a near term earnings. And, and I think that's also part of why I'm very drawn. Uh, to the way that they work. And I want to make sure that I, I'm part of an organization that, that takes hold of a very long-term view. I totally agree with it. And of course, I want to discuss Gemini uh, and the products in more detail, but I totally agree that it's one of the few companies and it's very difficult because there are so many short-term, uh, there are so many opportunities, which if you've been long enough in the space, you know it's short-term, but then to kind of uh, convince the management team and other team members that this is not for the long term, I, I'm pretty sure must be a very challenging job. Uh, before we get into Gemini, what do what do the Winklevoss brothers think of, uh, you know, Facebook's attempt uh, in this space, uh, which is Libra, and I think the name has changed now, Deal. especially given the Winklevoss's history with Facebook? Actually, it's a very good question. And you know, most people, a lot of people ask me that question, and most people would have thought what the result would be. But, um, but we're actually working very closely with uh, Facebook. God, give me more controversy. I mean, I was absolutely expecting a controversial answer to this. No, not <laughs> That's at all. amazing. Go no, ahead. So, so we're actually working very closely, you know, um, you know, with um, uh, DM. And in fact, um, just end of last month, MAS you know, had a, uh, a panel discussion, a fireside chat, you know, on, on the back of the FinTech Festival. And, and the Winklevoss Brothers was on the same panel uh, as... As, as DM, you know, kind of like, you know, sharing a little bit of thoughts about, you know, the whole digitalization movement and whatnot. So I think you know, I have a lot of respect uh, for them. You know, there, there's no business is business and uh, technology is technology. You know, whatever that makes sense to be done, uh, you know, they, they will be involved. And sorry, when you say DM, whom are you referring to? Um, the gentleman, just give me a second. I... Who's, who's heading Libra, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yes. Okay. That, yeah, just wanted to make sure that the audience realizes whom you're talking about. So then let's talk about business. What are the main products and services Gemini offers in the US and also outside the US if it's any different? Uh, for the most part, uh, I would say that we are quite universal in terms of our offerings. For every new product, you know, as long as from a jurisdiction standpoint that is allowed by regulators, then we will try to roll it out to as many uh, regions as possible. So at the moment, uh, we are a spot exchange so we allow trading and selling uh, of uh, cryptocurrencies on, on a spot basis. And we are also a custodian. So I think what, what is interesting is that we are a qualified custodian, um, just like in the space of your state street or HSBC, the qualified custodian for, for, for your traditional asset class. But in the digital asset space, you know, Gemini is qualified custodian because of our trust license in New York. And, and then that basically put us under the regulatory framework of New York State Department of Financial Services and New York Banking Law. So we're subject to capital reserve requirements, you know, cybersecurity, KYC, AML requirements, just like any financial institution. So we provide exchange, we provide uh, custody, we can provide co-wallet that's completely offline. 
uh, wallet that is built on hardware modules that is of the same security rating as the US government or US military. And at the same time, uh, we also have our own internal clearing platform, um, you know, more for institutional investors where they like to do a cross trade, they can come to Gemini and have the security and safety of settlement. So the fourth thing is um, we also provide OTC execution services for our institutional clients. Uh, we can offer them, you know, all kinds of algo trading, whether it's like time-weighted average or block trades. And we can also offer financing or lending. And, uh, and also um, we'll be rolling out on the options uh, capability too. But that, that is so on the institutional side, not, not on the retail platform. So on the retail platform, it's basically the spot exchange, right? And the custody solutions. Uh, yeah. So the most recent product that we have launched is a uh, what we call interest bearing account product. We call it Gemini Earn. And I'm very happy to say that, you know, we just launched it on Monday this week. So like two days ago, three days ago. And, and essentially what, what the product offers is that, you know, for, for example, if you're a long-term holder of Bitcoin or Ethereum, so instead of just kind of holding it in the wallet, you have the ability to lend it out and earn an interest. So there are different coins that we, we can offer, the whole spectrum, so you can earn up to 7.4% uh, APY. So that, that is something that's really interesting and I'm very, very happy to, to kind of have that offered um, out, of, out of Singapore as well, in addition to US. So which so okay let's talk about Gemini Earn because uh, the Winklevoss brothers have been tweeting about it. It's obviously a new product. I think it already correct me if I'm wrong. Already has attracted one billion dollars AUM. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. Yeah. It's a short span of one month actually. That that that's amazing. And in which countries is it available? I know it's available in the US and Singapore. Uh, which other countries? Uh, at the moment, it's only these two. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you have to be a citizen of one of these two countries to be able to uh, sign up for Gemini Earn. Or, or um, resident. Okay. Yeah. Or resident. Or so resident. anyone that's like, you know, living in Singapore. Right. So I, I want to go a deep dive into all of the products that you mentioned. But before I do that, what are the most uh, popular products with users? Or I mean, for Gemini, which is the biggest, maybe the revenue or, or a, in some numbers or active users, uh, which are the biggest products? Uh, I would say that, you know, at, we, we, because we're a private company, so we, we don't typically disclose our user base. Uh, but for the most part, you know, our spot exchange is where the bulk of the activities is happening. Uh, Gemini Earn just started uh, a month ago in the US and obviously you know, here is just this week. Um, but I, I believe that, you know, that will also be one of the strongest product because I think our user base is a little bit different from some of the uh, other exchanges, uh, for example, like your derivative exchanges, like your Binance or OKEX, where there's a lot more, um, a lot more reactive traders uh, that take on leverage. So for us, I think you know we we still we still we're still getting a lot of um, I would say maybe the new crypto beginners that are looking for a safe place for them to start, uh, an easy place for them to on ramp fiat currencies. Because not, not every single exchanges uh, are able to allow a user to very easily do a wire transfer. So for us here in Gemini, it's actually quite interesting that you know if you are a Singapore resident, you have a Sing Pass, you can essentially use a Sing Pass to do a sign up, and within two minutes, the KYC is done because we essentially extract your personal data from my info. So we're, we're I think we're the only exchange that allows for that. And, and then, you know, you can then set up your local bank account, you can link it and do fast transfer. So almost instantaneous, you can send in your, your SING dollar and, and start trading on the platform. That's amazing. I didn't know that. And what are the, the how are the prices uh, compared to international uh, prices on Gemini Singapore? Um, is, so Gemini Singapore is, is not really a Gemini Singapore. The exchange is it's the same exchange across all our user base in the globally. So you get a full liquidity that everyone is getting. I think that's a beauty as well. And one of the questions which I was going to ask, and I think maybe it's the right time to ask you right now, Gemini is one of the top places that I recommend. I, I, I wouldn't say I used to recommend, but I still try to recommend new users to go to just because I trust it so much and it's simple to use. But And I have told you this, that I have got feedback from new users that Gemini throttles new users and the limits are very low. And maybe for a very small retail user, it could make sense. But as soon as if you know you're if you're an HR family office 
who's trying to do slightly bigger volumes in the beginning uh, they have faced problems compared to say like blockfi where they've not faced any such problems is this a correct understanding am i wrong uh, so when you say they face problem are you referring to liquidity on the exchange oh. no the limits like how much volume they can buy or sell uh, in the first few days or as they are a new user and maybe they are credit rating is not built up within gemini system is there something like that when new users have very small volumes that they can transact in uh, not that i'm aware of uh, especially here in asia um so so there's no requirement actually in fact talking about that um i was talking about you know transferring sing dollar on ramp into the platform so for a lot of the other exchanges they they actually have a annual cap of like 20000 or something along that line so we actually That's have correct. no cap so we 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 do not have any cap at all you know you can you can send as much <laughs> of funds as you like i think that that is one in terms of trading you know i i haven't come across uh, any issue um that you have mentioned so then then i stand corrected and um, uh, so uh, besides the us are there any countries where you specifically are not available uh, the gemini exchange or the products and services yeah i think from the retail platform um there are some regions that we we do not operate in so for example malaysia thailand or philippines or indonesia um because i think uh, it requires certain regulatory licenses um to to operate but as on the retail side i think um maybe interesting for me to also highlight on the institution side when i say institution uh, i include all accredited investors or high net worth and so that we don't uh, there isn't any limitation so if a user learn about gemini in malaysia or high net worth they want to set up an account and obviously they will have set up offshore bank account then um they could also you know come to us you know to be to be onboarded as an institutional client and the brothers have been uh, you know retweeting tweets from balaji and a, and a few others from i spirit uh, about supporting bitcoin regulation in india because you know that's been in the news recently um for, so you kind of mentioned other large asian markets where you do not operate on the retail side coinbase revolut they seem to be eyeing india any such plans for other large asian markets like india Um I mean it's part of my job to look for regional expansion and I would say that the most natural places to look at is countries with a uh, high population so India obviously is uh, is one of them um but do we have any concrete like you know inroads on exactly how to enter the market uh, I would say that not at this point but clearly there's something that I have um you know been trying to spend time to understand more so the regulatory environment is al- always the most important for thing for Gemini So we want to make sure that you know in any region that we operate in we want to be fully compliant uh with the regulators and and ensure that we adopt the right licenses and what not. So I'll keep you posted you know in terms of the future growth plans there. Clearly you're not spending enough time with me in that case. <laughs> yes, we should. We <laughs> should. <India. laughs> Uh, so uh, you mentioned a couple of products um, targeted towards family offices and institutions uh, could you describe some of them a little bit uh, more yeah sure so for for institutional clients and you know, i uh, there's a lot more that we can do uh, and also given my my background as always been an institutional bankers you know covering a lot of uh, wealth managers family offices and private banks um you know i i think i, I do have a certain understanding of the kind of requirements that they have and in addition to just simply spot trading or buy and hold. So for example, you know, we can uh, also offer the Gemini earn product but in an institutional format so it can be customized in terms of tenor. You can do a one month trade, three month or six month loan for example, and you can look at different um tokens and you can even do US dollar. So so it's very interesting in the crypto world um for for the audience that might not uh, understand, there's a very active repo market. So there's a very active borrowing and lending and especially now we're in kind of like a structural bull market so all the more there is a very strong demand for US dollar or US dollar stable coin and what are the borrowers you know doing with the stable coin US dollar that they can do a few things they can either use it to invest into crypto or some of them are using that to carry out this what we call a, a carry trade or basis arbitrage which I can kind of go a little bit into that is your long spot and your short futures and you try to capture you know the contango now so as a um 
high net worth of family office, you, know, you might have cash in a balance sheet, or, or you might not be happy with earning 2% yield on your fixed income portfolio, then you can actually lend out some of these uh, US dollar and earn between 7 to 10% uh, annualized return. And Gemini can facilitate um, that trade for you. So that, that is something actually very interesting uh, in addition to just simply trading crypto. So that, that's... And depict- yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, actually, I mean, that, 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 is, that is an interesting trade that I want to highlight. And what are the typical uh, uh, minimum transaction sizes for such trades? Yeah, typically we, because it's institutional trade, so we, we try to do it minimum of 500,000. So it's not, it's not that prohibitive, um, but neither we want it to be too small, you know, especially we want to make sure that it's not a retail investor kind of transaction. I'm pretty sure that, uh, you know, the user base for Gemini, just like with all exchanges, must be skyrocketing right now. And um, in 2017, I think most of the exchanges struggled with their operations. You know, the new account opening process, customer support, everything went for a toss. Do you think Gemini is better prepared this time uh, with the search? Um, to be to be fair, uh, I think none of the exchanges have expected this search in volume because if you look at since February... <laughs> Last year, the volume literally searched like 10, 20x. So, so I would say that, you know, we, we, we were also caught by surprise, just to be perfectly honest. Um, but the good thing is, you know, we acted very quickly. So especially here in Asia, you know, we have um, staff up on our customer support. And I've got another seven headcounts in the pipeline that we'll be hiring, you know, just to focus on customer support. So I would say that the, the backlog of tickets or customer tickets has has really shrunk um, dramatically, you know, from from weeks to now, like you know, less than a week. But but it's the same issue that that all exchanges are facing. There's just a huge uh, backlog of customer tickets. Yeah, I think every all the exchanges expect this to happen. They just cannot plan it. Like they don't know when, and they can you cannot have spare capacity for a ten x twenty x increase. So I, I I know how painful this is. So Gemini currently is ranked um, among the top 20 exchanges. I think it's about 16th. Uh, it's ranked 16th on coinmarketcap.com in terms of volume. Right. In spite of being among the older exchanges, uh, Gemini started in 2014, uh, I think Coinbase in 2012. Um, a- any idea why not higher than the current ranking? Yeah, I think that that's a very good question. And um, I think a lot of it is is really how Gemini has started. Yes, we started in 2014, and, and, and the way the Winklevoss brothers you know, built a company was having a mindset of building an institutional great platform serving institution. So that was actually the original game plan. It was, it was not really for retail. Um, however, um, the market has kind of proven that you know, at that time, the institutional adoption was, was not there. So I would say that the Winklevoss twins, they, they, are, they have the foresight, but maybe they're a little bit too early in the game. And, and because of that, you know, we pivoted you know, a couple of years later. So by the time that we kind of go into the consumer market, retail market, it was already quite late, maybe 2016, 17. And our mobile app actually only rolled out about two years ago. So we lost a lot of market share, you know, clearly to uh, Coinbase, who started a company, you know, for retail, for consumer, and, and that was the game plan all along. And they've done a great job, you know, obviously, you know, getting the first mover advantage. Whereas for us, you know, we 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 focus on building our infrastructure, like I mentioned, our our custody is of the highest security level. So it is paying off now. Um, since six months ago. Uh, you might have been aware that the world's first Bitcoin ETF, which is listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange, uh, Purpose. Uh, Purpose they use, Invest. Yeah, Purpose Invest. Yes. And they've accumulated more than 1.3, maybe by now it's more than 1.5 billion already. So they use Gemini as the sole custodian. And subsequently, the other two um, BTC ETF that's also listed on TSX, they also use Gemini as a custodian. So I think that, that really kind of proves the point that, you know, the... When, when the institutions start coming on board, um, Gemini become a, a choice uh, provider. I totally agree with that. In fact, coming to Gemini custody, I mean, I think it's one of your most famous products. And on the retail side, many people are not aware. Uh, I think even BlockFi uses Gemini as their custody solution provider. So some of the That's largest correct. players, including competitors, use Gemini custody. Can you 
describe why it's such a popular choice among institutions, among competitors? What's what's unique? Yeah, I think it's really in terms of the way that we we structure and build up the custody. So I think a lot of people also are aware that in the Winklevoss brothers, you know, they own a lot of Bitcoin. So when they they were trying to build an infrastructure and custody actually for their own coins, and as they were doing that, they realized that in a such a strong institutional grade that you know it can be offered to other institutions that would like to come into um, crypto investment. So what we have is that you know, we have certification uh, by Deloitte, what we call SOC one, SOC two. So we're the first exchange that actually achieve all this certification. And we and we go through that process you know, every by by annual annually, so that's one. And number two, I think I mentioned before, in terms of the way that the custody is being built, up, the infrastructure, the hardware security modules or HSM uses the highest security rating, uh, exactly the same as the rating that you know the U.S. government military uses. And and our HSMs are geographically distributed across all U.S. in data centers. Their surveillance are twenty four seven. And also the whole the whole technology of uh, multi signature you know is all implemented. So and the last thing is we have the largest insurance coverage uh, on uh, both our hot and cold wallet across all the custodians in in the world. So you mentioned about you know we we are not among the top ten volume in terms of exchanges, uh, uh, in terms of all the different exchanges, uh, and yet our insurance coverage in absolute amount is the largest. So if you think about that. For a large exchange like say Coinbase, which obviously have a much bigger asset under custody,、uh, but their insurance coverage amount is less than what we have. So from an insurance coverage perspective,、um, Gemini, you know, provide even more security, you know, for our users. And in in addition to that, you know, for some of our users that wanted to buy additional insurance, we actually can offer that, and we can broker, you know, deals like that to help them enhance their insurance coverage. So I think you know because of all all, all these various the reason you know our our custody product is、uh, by far and our strongest product, and and we often use that、um, as the first offering, and you know so far you know from my discussion with high net worth or institution, the first question they ask is never about what product do you have, or what is your fee structure. The first question all of them is uncanny. All of them ask. Can you please tell me how secure is my Bitcoin going to be if I put it with you in your wallet? No, I absolutely agree. And、uh, to my,、uh, you know, to the followers, I I vouch for、uh, you know Gemini and Gemini's custody、uh, product absolutely. But my second question is, what are what are the fee? What what are the charges for Gemini custody? Sure. Um. So we start at zero point four percent per annum、uh, on the asset under custody. And as the、um, AUC increases, then it will scale down from forty basis point. And is Gemini Custody available only to institutions, or is it available to retail users as well? It's available for you and I right now,、uh, and there's no need for additional login. So it's the exact same login that you have on your exchange. And if you go under settings, you can actually choose to add a custody account, and it's seamless. Right, so I think exchanges or crypto companies are becoming more and more like a bank. So they are offering all you know custody solutions, exchange, interest. Do you also you kind of mention that you offer USD loans also against crypto as collateral? Do you do that like BlockFi or some other exchanges? So for institution investors, no, we can we can、uh, provide that. And this is available only in the US or even outside the US. Ah,、uh, it's also available here in Singapore, for example. Okay, and again, any ideas of the minimum limits or the transaction size? I think typically we 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 still look at maybe down to a quarter million, you know, as a start. Right. So okay, the other really popular product、um, of Gemini is the Gemini Dollar, the GUSD、uh, stable coin.、Um, how big is GUSD, and how fast is it growing? Yeah, I mean GUSD right now we are、uh, over a hundred million. And it might it might sound small, but you know, as we scale up the business, and and there'll be other businesses that we intend to roll out that will adopt and use、uh, GUSD, I think it can it can go out quite rapidly. So, for example,、uh, for some of the more advanced crypto traders, you know, that they will stick,、um, you know, stable coins into some of the DeFi protocol, for example. So, Gemini is actually accepted in several DeFi protocol like Aave, for example. 
And and I think you know as as the world adopts more and more DeFi, um, you know, German dollar, the Gemini dollar will also be adopted you know, more rapidly. Uh, yes, I think GUSD is also the default uh, stablecoin uh, used in BlockFi. So as soon as you remit US dollars to BlockFi, they immediately convert it to GUSD. And that's one of the first questions that users ask uh, when they're using BlockFi. And they come to me, what is GUSD? And I'm like, it's Gemini dollar. It's 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 amazing. <laughs> what do you think of uh, GUSD's competition with USDC? I think USDC and Visa recently um, uh, you know, had a, forged a partnership for uh, visa settlements using USDC and yes. non-US uh, stable coins like USDT. Yeah, I, I think you know, part of the reason is also because uh, in circulation, uh, USDT and USDC is larger. So we we are lagging behind in terms of volume. And I think that's also partly because we've been focusing on the other aspect uh, of the business, whether it's our exchange or our loan products. Um, but clearly, you know, given that USD is actually one of the earliest stable coin, and it's probably the only stable coin that is 100% backed by US dollar. So maybe just a bit of background on how GUSD is uh, created. So for every one GUSD that we issue, uh, one US dollar will be kept in State Street segregated. So it's fully backed. And I'm sure all of us have heard about USDT that is not necessarily 100% you know, fully backed you know, for that matter. But for us, it is completely one for one. Yeah, uh, there has been, uh, at least in my view, there has been uh, some uh, controversy around USDT since the beginning, but I'm a little bit more relaxed since their settlement with the, uh, I think with the New York State uh, Attorney, so I wouldn't like to spread the fud over here at least, but I know what you mean. I definitely agree with you that uh, GUSD and I think USDC are definitely more regulated and in that way more are trustworthy, but I'm comfortable with USDT as well, just for my audience. Sure. Um, so I've been saying on, um, you know, sunnybitcoin.com and uh, to my followers that this Bitcoin price cycle is different than the previous uh, five Bitcoin price cycles, you know, because this one is driven by institutional uh, demand. And what that has done is that it has created a supply shock because institutions don't trade. And it has also created an unprecedented demand due to which Bitcoin's price is expected to go to, um, uh, you know, it's it's going higher and higher. Uh, do you see that happening on Gemini as you're an exchange? Yeah, actually, I mean, in terms of the order book and order flow, we are seeing just at the price action you see, right? You know, the volatility actually has dampened a lot, especially in the last couple of weeks compared to what it was before. Like every dip is being bought into and, and that's the kind of order book that is also quite evident on our exchange and I'm sure it's the same in other exchanges. And uh, I think part of the reason is also the institutions, <clears throat> they need time to, to really kind of research. And, and this whole really kind of market movement really happened from Christmas last year when the previous resistance of 20,000 was broken. And it was moving so quickly that, you know, everybody needs to really look into that. But institutions are institutions. They, they cannot invest into a new asset class without proper due diligence, without proper board approval for the corporates. And and now we are in mid-April. So it sounds about right. They take a couple of months to, to get everything together, get it approved. So when, when they finally make a decision to allocate, they are asset allocator. They're they not trader, like you said. So they will simply say, okay, we decided whether it's 2% or 5%. That is the amount. And let's just go and execute. So so I think that that has really you know given the underlying demand and support and dampen the volatility. And you're seeing that on your OTC platform as well, because institutions typically would prefer to use OTC. Yeah, correct. So we've been, uh, our OTC execution desk has been working around the clock. And, um, and that's why we actually have uh, traders that are sitting in New York, in Europe, and also here in Singapore, you know, to cover a kind of 24 uh, seven, um, you know, customers, customer requirements. Right, so I want to highlight that OTC is also a product that you offer to family offices, institutions, and HNIs. Great. And I, I, I absolutely agree. In my last uh, weekly news roundup, that's I think the second episode, I mentioned that what happened uh, and which I saw from research uh, from a couple of other analysts that I follow, that till $20,000 Bitcoin, that was like a price target and there was resistance till then. 
because this was the previous price that Bitcoin had touched. But as soon as $20,000 was crossed, now there is no price in history which you can look up to. So is $60,000 high or low? Is $100,000? Nobody knows. But so actually Bitcoin became more bullish once it crossed its previous all-time high of uh, December 2017. So I, I completely agree with you. And I think the Winklevoss brothers also wrote an article in um, August 2020. And this was, of course, before, uh, you know, uh, um, it was a few months before uh, before December 2020 that Bitcoin price will touch $500,000. And I'm not really sure that they um, uh, had a timeline to it. And in fact, it's one of the pinned tweets on the Winklevoss Capital Twitter account. It's a great article. Bitcoin is at all-time highs. Um, uh, and uh, what do you feel about the current price? Well, disclaimer, in awareness change. So we, we don't provide research. We don't provide um, price target. Uh, but as you mentioned about that article, uh, I think it was called Bitcoin 500,000. Uh, rightly so pointed out. Um, maybe I can share a little bit, you know, with the audience, you know, why, where that number come from, right? You know, was it kind of plucked from thin air? You know, are they dreaming or whatnot? Actually, the thesis is quite, quite simple. Um, they basically look at Bitcoin and compare that against gold. Um, because in, in a lot of um, aspects and, and features, they're actually quite similar. And why do people own gold? It's primarily because of scarcity value. And but if you look at gold, the annual supply is a between five to eight percent. So so it's, it's small, but it still can be mined and, and can still increase. Um, but for Bitcoin, the interesting thing is, uh, as as more and more bitcoins are mined, uh, it can only hit a maximum supply of twenty one million, which is expected to be around maybe say twenty one forty or so. And now in circulation is um, above eighteen million. So we, we only have like less than three more million of a Bitcoin to be mined. So I think that is the biggest difference, right? And also in terms of portability, it's hard to carry gold bars around. <laughs> but, you know, with Bitcoin, you just need a thumb drive or need a phone, right? A, a digital wallet. And, and also the visibility, I think, is, is super, um, super important to you. You can't really cut off a gold bar, you know, in the half and, and use it to, to make payment. But Bitcoin can be divisible up to eight decimal places. So there's a lot of characteristic, and, uh, and I think above all, is really kind of driven by the whole macroeconomic environment. The central banks are just increasing money supply at, at, at a rate that has never been seen before. I mean, since the pandemic, um, the six months you know, after that, the Fed has printed in one third as much of the money that they printed in the last 10 years after the previous uh, global financial crisis, and, and that pace is still continuing. I'm not sure when it will stop. So to hedge against asset inflation, the hedge against the US dollar devaluation, that's where a lot of people are starting to look into uh, Bitcoin. And if gold as an asset class is at 10 trillion market cap, Bitcoin is slightly over 1 trillion. So, so kind of to kind of equate that to if, if Bitcoin is a better version of gold, then it should be valued as least like gold, which is at about 500,000. I totally agree. And I think more traditional financial institutions like Citibank, Bloomberg Intelligence, Morgan Stanley are pushing out now the same kind of thesis of looking at Bitcoin and gold and then comparing the market cap. I think my research shows that about 2% gold is added uh, every year, but that doesn't matter. Uh, and Hello. most of Bitcoin supply will be kind of complete by 2040 and then a very, very tiny percent by 2140. So no, I totally absolutely agree that this is the main thesis of Bitcoin. I think I still feel that this is just the next stage of Bitcoin's evolution and Bitcoin is far bigger. But we are talking about Gemini and you and your opinions over here. So also, what do you think about um, regulatory uh, scenario in the US and also in Singapore? And since you are kind of, uh, you know, responsible for other Asian countries, uh, what do you feel about that as well? Yeah, I, I think looking at um, looking at Singapore in particular, um, that's also part of the reason why you know when the Winklevoss brothers are thinking about Asia expansion, they were thinking about which country, which region shall be the headquarter, and Singapore obviously in the end was chosen. Um, I think for a very good reason that MES, you know, being a lot more forward thinking as a regulator, um, at least you know maybe even compared to some of the neighboring countries uh, or or in North Asia for that matter. I think that really pro provides a very strong uh, support um, for companies like ourselves to, to be very comfortable to come here as headquarter because we, we know that the regulators have done a lot of their homework and they want to regulate. You know, for us in the Germany, we always want to operate in a place that can, can have proper regulation because with that, 
then you can have a, a mass adoption with retail or consumer investors you know, feeling uh, comfortable enough you know, to be in an asset class that's regulated. Now, I am also hearing, obviously, Hong Kong uh, SFC has put up a consultative paper. So they are also looking into regulating this space. And maybe within the next 6 to 12 months, you know, there will be some clarity. And I think that is actually good news. Uh, I would like to see more of this uh, regulate, regulatory you know, development you know, across all the different regions. At the end of the day, I think the, the goal or the vision is that you know, there will be a global framework, um, just like our equities market or bond market. You know, there will be a, some kind of a standard, global standard. I'm not sure how long it will take to get there. But at least globally, in a majority you know, regions or countries will regulate you know, crypto exchanges. Uh, I, I think it is good for everyone. Yeah, I agree. Any concerns on the recent comments from MAS, which I do feel were in response to a very specific local crypto exchange and not a general remark, but still any concerns? Yeah, I think you're referring to um, Senior Minister Taman's um, um, uh, comments. Um, the timing of that, you know, you're right. It is also feels very much like because of what happened in the, in the recent uh, case. And, and I look at it as two risks, right? You know, the first risk is platform risk. And the second risk is asset risk. So for that particular issue, it, it was quite clear that it's a platform risk, that the platform that was created was not proper, it was not properly regulated. And in the end, it resulted in some kind of a fraud that led to, you know, very unfortunate, right? You know, people losing their life savings, right? And they, and they and lose- just for, for the yeah. benefit of the users, we are talking about a company, a Singaporean company called Torque, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, so, that's right, Talk Trading. And yes. uh, it's really unfortunate because uh, investors didn't lose money because of a wrong investment view. Uh, it, it was it really the platform. So that's why, you know, again, uh, I, I, know, I know I mentioned this many times, and it sounds like a, like a broken uh, record, regulation. You, you want, as investors, you want to be in a platform that you know is trusted, is reputable, is regulated. And, and Gemini, you know, having established ourselves since 2014, we are one of the earliest uh, name in, in this game. And, and at the same time, you know, regulated in US, regulated in UK under FCA, and obviously now here in Singapore, uh, we are licensed applicant of PSA. Um, I, I think that is really paramount. And the second risk is obviously uh, asset risk. Um, so we touched a little bit about that as well. You know, Bitcoin or crypto is highly volatile. No question about that, you know, compared to equities or bonds. Uh, but I think we also need to look at how the volatility has moved in, uh, over the years. And clearly it has dropped quite significantly. And, um, and the third thing is also as an investors, um, we, we need to look at risk, but we also need to look at returns. So from a risk-adjusted return perspective, I think it's quite interesting. You look at S&P 500, the last 10 years annualized return is about 11%. Your sovereign long bonds is about 4.5% annualized return, and, and gold is actually less than 2% annualized return. And Bitcoin is 200%. So yes, that it is more volatile but at the same time you know it also provides a a good risk adjusted return so from a sharp ratio standpoint it actually has been performing well totally i think for most people once bitcoin touches an all-time high they kind of feel has it reached its um, apex you know and is there uh, such uh, returns possible and i still believe uh, again i'm not a certified financial analyst we have to give these disclaimers right yeah. that bitcoin has just got started especially with institutions so the big money is still um, is still coming in um, uh, lastly, what are your views on the current NFT rage? Is uh, Gemini doing anything with NFTs? Any Sunny Bitcoin special announcements on a new products from Gemini? Interestingly, I'm not sure whether you are aware or our audience is aware. Um, Gemini actually owns Nifty Gateway, which is the largest uh, uh, marketplace for NFTs. And the recent transaction, $69 million dollars, transaction on a Beepo NFT was transacted on Nifty Gateway. I did not know that. That's amazing. Well, we'll just we'll just use that as a Sunny Bitcoin special announcement. Go ahead. <laughs> so yes, so if you ask us, you know, we, we are obviously um, very interested and very invested in the NFT space. And um, and to me, actually, personally, I, I really feel that this is really one very good use case, an example of how Cryptocurrencies or blockchain technology is democratizing 
um, you know, giving accessibility to uh, empowerment to individual. I mean, back in the days, you know, you want to be an artist, you're probably value in after you're dead. And, but now you can be a live artist and allow your, your, your art pieces to be viewed and appreciated and, and also have a market value that's attached to that. And, and that's all empowered through um, crypto. That's amazing. I think Gemina is one of these uh, underrated companies. I mean, if you uh, look at what Gemina is doing with the exchange, the custody, uh, you know, product uh, with the stable coin, with uh, you own a, a popular NFT exchange, which I did not know about with institutions. Um, I think it, I think it's pretty amazing. Before we wrap up, uh, Jeremy, how can people find you, follow you uh, for Singapore, uh, follow Gemini? Yeah, sure. We have uh, multiple channels. Um, so we have a Telegram channel. Gemini APAC. Um, so you can you can join us for that. You know, I'm, I'm sure I can send you the link so that you can send to the rest. Uh, you, you can follow us on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me on LinkedIn. And and yeah, just very simple. Download our app and then uh, you, you you can you can check us out. All of the links will be provided in the show notes below. Jeremy, thanks for doing this. Um, I think the Winklevosses and uh, Gemini is a slow and steady approach, which you kind of mentioned, you know, to Bitcoin has made Gemini definitely at least one of my most trusted companies, which I have absolutely no qualms in recommending to my uh, friends and family and users. I, I, I guess I'm waiting for Bitcoin's price uh, to uh, touch a certain uh, point so that the social network uh, movie can become a trilogy. And of course, you know what ending I would like to see. <laughs> um, anyways, if you like this video or podcast, please share and subscribe. Jeremy, thank you for doing this and thank you for coming on Sunny Bitcoin. Thank you for having me. Have a good day. Cheers. 